Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back if you're returning. Today we're going to be focusing on a few things Micah's lawyer has come out and said, as well as taking a look into the Skinners again, which Susie is currently hanging out with JP only a few days after Micah's death. We have a lot of information to uncover, so I'm going to get right into it. However, I want to preface the video by saying I am not a true crime professional. I am simply a true crime fan. I find cases online and I'm simply reacting to what has been made available to the public. With that being said, I have about four pages of notes, so let's get started. Before Micah died, she had retained a lawyer to file for divorce against her husband, J.P. Miller. Even though Micah is now passed away, the lawyer was hired, so she still represents Micah, and because the filing of the divorce went through before Micah's death, the divorce still has to go through, so there is still a case to be fought. Regina Ward is the lawyer who is representing Micah, and she is quoted here saying, he, JP, claims that she, Micah, was diagnosed with these mental illnesses and was on lithium. According to her, she didn't know she'd been diagnosed or what her medication was because he always controlled the medication. He administered her medication. In fact, he admitted he would cut up her pills and give them to her if she refused to take the medication. There's also allegations that he was injecting her in the buttocks with testosterone, a steroid. Oh, but don't worry, it was to increase her libido. Idiot. I believe Micah wasn't on any sort of mental health medications before she got with JP. So the fact that he's even crushing it up, being like, here, here, take it, take it, take it, definitely take it. Make sure you take it, take it, damn it. Lithium, if it is a BUSED, can lead to delirium. So maybe that could have had a play in the last moments that Micah was seen alive. Miss Ward, Micah's a lawyer, goes on to quote, JP gave a sermon called Discontentment which two-thirds into his speech he talks about how God says its wives duties is to provide intimacy at any given time end quote we are not to question when our wives want intimacy we are just to give it we need to be we need to be emotionally and physically available at all time Wonderful sermon, JP. So we already know JP had a history of affairs. I mean, where did Micah come into play? She was an affair. JP was married to a woman named Allison, and we'll talk about Allison toward the end of the video because she does have something to say. We'll touch more on later. Uh, in my opinion, JP is a horn dog, and I feel a lot of the community who knew that was, this was going on sort of turned a blind eye, maybe because of who JP was in the community. But people couldn't quite shake the eerie feeling when JP shows up at a restaurant that him and Micah used to frequent to quite often in Myrtle Beach. It was a sushi bar and he is seen quote laughing and drinking with Miss Susie Skinner. To give you a brief context of on who skin skinny. <laughs> I put Susie and Skinner together, skinny. I'll get more into Susie in a moment but people are just kind of side eyeing this being like mm. Didn't your wife just die four days ago and now you're out and like laughing and with another woman? Like it just seemed really odd. Odd enough that people took pictures. I mean, I don't blame them, honestly. I probably would have too. He's a pastor. You're going to go out and somebody's going to notice you. How do you think? Mm. Now, Susie claims that other friends were invited with her and JP, but she was the only friend that showed up, so it just so happened that they were together alone. Even if that was the case, I think it's very awkward for a man and a woman to be alone, especially out to dinner in an in intimate setting like that. And then it's like at your deceased wife's it's one of her favorite restaurants like it's just so wrong it's so wrong an anonymous source reached out to daily mail and also talked about seeing jp and Susie at the restaurant i've seen him there a couple of times with micah too she used to really like that restaurant i was surprised to see him there so soon after her death and with another woman too it was like he didn't have a care in the world end quote other people looking around like what the heck his wife just passed away why is he out with miss suzy q over here 
that's what I would be doing. I'm nosy. And Miss Susie, if we're going to make such a claim that JP sent other text messages or other invites out to other friends that night, I would love to see that. I would love. Ooh, give it to me. Give me the evidence. Give me the receipts, please, because I would love to see how many people JP invited out that night. Another example of JP just being a total hornball, in my opinion, News Nation reported that back in February, keep in mind that Micah allegedly unalived herself in April of this year. So this was back in February, a couple months prior to that. To jog your memory, Michael was supposed to be going on a missions trip to Kenya also in February. So he's just, oh, he just, he icky, icky, icky. He gives me the ick. News Nation reports that JP in February went to another restaurant. It was just with a man though, I think either business meeting or casual lunch, whatever. And JP ended up leaving uh, quite a large tip on a waitress's bill. I think it was almost about a 50% tip, as well as his phone number and a little smiley face. Oh, JP, you got the riz. Oh, pastor, 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 pastor. So the waitress not knowing that JP wasn't available. I don't know if he what, just wasn't wearing a ring or what the what the deal was but she reached out to JP via text message a couple days after he left her his number. She claims that the conversation was kept relatively casual but that JP kept requesting bikini photos. Okay. As some of us females do when we start talking to somebody new. We end up googling them or researching them and she ended up digging up who he was and about his affair and so red flags popped up for her and she was just not interested. Christiana is the waitress that is named in the story. She stopped talking to JP but then the news about Micah's death came up and she's like started just started piecing to get something didn't feel right. Christiana allegedly just reaches out to JP and says, hey, what's new or is anything new? And JP replies, quote, yes, lots new. LOL. <laughs> I'll text you later, end quote. Lots new. <laughs> What? I don't even think I would have responded. If I was going through like my wife just unaliving herself and now I'm dealing with the kids and the church and the... I, I would feel like texting back a waitress would be the last thing on my mind. But now for JP. I did find a great video on YouTube. He goes by the name of JLR Investigates here on YouTube. Did an awesome, he did a several live streams covering this case. And he ends up actually going to the location where Chris Skinner, Susie Skinner's ex-husband who passed away uh, due to a tragic accident. This investigator actually goes to the scene of that crime and takes a look at the pool and he makes a couple interesting points throughout the video. So the video itself is about 23 minutes long. I'm not going to watch the entire thing in today's video. If you're interested in, I will link it down below. Go check it out. It is a really great video, so I do recommend it. But I'm just going to pick out a few things that he said that we're going to talk about, and I'll end it with what Allison is up to today. So the video starts with the content creator is just kind of walking around the parking lot. There are people actively swimming in the community pool, so he doesn't want to get anybody on the live stream. But there's a woman, and it seems like he insinuates that this isn't the first time that he's been approached with somebody with a little bit of information about what happened with Chris Skinner. I think everybody was okay initially believing that a paraplegic died around Labor Day by drowning in the a pool, a community pool early that morning. But I think now people are sort of questioning it and being like, mm, maybe we should have asked more questions. So a woman is just pulling him aside. She says that she doesn't want to be on camera. So our YouTuber puts his camera down real quick to respect her wishes. You can kind of hear her in the background a little bit, but he does come back and just give us a summary of what she says. She works at a knife store. She said that uh, Micah came into her store in February uh, selling donuts because she was trying to raise money to go to Kenya. And she said that when she was there, Mr. Christopher comes into the store. I'm going to pause there real quick because she, he's saying Chris 
he's supposed to be saying JP at first because I'm like, wait a minute, why is Chris following Micah into the store? So he's just giving us a little bit of context that yes, Micah was planning on going on a missions trip to Kenya, so she's doing fundraisers and it seems like JP follows her into this store and is upset. So I just want to say that when he's saying Chris at the moment, he actually means JP. He will correct himself. It's belligerent. She owns a knife store or she works at a knife store and she said uh, Chris was belligerent and uh, he was refusing to leave and they called the cops. They called the cops on Christopher. They called the cops on Christopher. I just asked her, is there a police report or anything out there? She goes, I don't know. But then she said that Christopher pulled out his camera and was like yelling at, at her and, and the store employees, right? And then she said that afterward, Christopher went on to the reviews and started leaving them bad reviews on on the, on her knife business and i just asked if i could share that information she said sure go ahead this is putting a bad taste in people's mouth about uh jp's character in the community story where someone comes forward and shares some information she lives right by here and she came out to say hi um so that's that's interesting folks this is called emmons preserve this is called Emmons Preserve. So now we got more information, folks, about Chris as his character. So um, you know you FOIA people out there, the people out there that file requests. More and more people are coming out of the woodwork talking about instances. But it's weird that Chris would follow Micah just a few months ago to a knife store. And then she also said she ended by saying it's interesting that Micah was saying that her tires got slashed. Maybe it was the knife. Uh, she said that he maybe he bought a knife in her store before. I don't know if that was a prior or whatever like that, but she said he's been in there in the past to buy a knife. This woman also said that JP has come into her store before and purchased a knife from her. And Micah's tires were slashed and even Micah herself said, oh, well, maybe it's the knife that JP had purchased. I mean, this, I think Micah had a really good idea that she was living with a monster. Well, I don't know what to take on that. Uh, it's interesting stuff. It's, uh, wow, what, did I say Chris? Who's Chris? Did I say Chris? If I say Chris, I mean John Paul, Pastor John Paul. Why am I saying Chris? Right there, he corrected himself where he meant he, this was supposed to be talking about John Paul, not Chris. Chris is deceased. He drowned in a pool. We have another incident two months ago. Micah's in a, in a, in a knife store selling. Uh, now, she was prepared to go to Kenya. She was prepared to ke go to Kenya. I think, I personally think, right? Remember that, that so-called email that Micah got from uh, Pastor John Paul? Remember that email? Remember that email that she got like one week prior? Um, I'm thinking like that was the last straw for Micah because it like, you know, Micah was prepared to go to Kenya and to do her missions and, and be involved with children and whatnot. And I think the pastor was taking that away from her. I think the pastor was taken away from that or, you know, taking that opportunity, that last opportunity because she was finally breaking away from him and and I think that's part of what just was the straw that broke the camel's back. His wife, there's rumors out there that she collected a lot of money in inheritance money. And it's interesting if you read the backstory of how the wife got involved with him, she was basically his physical therapist when he got in an accident. And I don't know how long they've been together prior to him being found in the water there, unresponsive. You're, you're out here all alone, right? You're a, you're a quadriplegic and you're out here all along, alone in the water. Over the years, she starts getting very close and comfortable with Pastor John Paul. And then after what happened to Micah, Susie is seen with, this is the picture, this is the picture, right? With Pastor John Paul. He was well known. Chris was well known. He was well known. Was it an accidental drowning or was it foul play or something involved with Susie getting rid of him? And I, I say this in good faith because they ruled it an accident. They ruled it an accident. But a lot of people now are skeptical about this particular drowning, about the drowning. There's an article out there. Paralyzed man drowns in Myrtle Beach neighborhood pool. 
I'm only bringing up Chris's story because it is now tying into a possible affair with his wife Susie and JP. Allegedly, JP's ex-wife Allison Wilson even filed emergency custody orders. She wanted to get full custody of their children together. In Allison's motion for full custody, she is quoted, just two weeks prior to the incident, Chris's death, Susie's husband confronted JP and asked him to leave his wife and his children alone. It is chilling to know that the spouses of both Susie and JP are now dead from tragic events. So this said, Chris confronted JP two weeks before he was found drowned in the community pool saying to leave his wife and children alone. Why would one husband tell another man to leave his wife alone? What he, what could he possibly be doing? What could he... According to Daily Mail, Allison has also filed emergency court documents alleging that JP was schmectually inappropriate with several underage girls. According to these documents, she's alleging that JP, while Micah was babysitting his kids, that he was out hiring uh, Schmex workers for fun while they were t still together. Just please keep in mind that I am not trying to crack the case. I have a lot of fun discussing this with you, so I might not have every single detail right away. So I might know some stuff you don't know. You'll probably know stuff that I don't know. So please feel free to have a discussion down below. That's what this is supposed to be about. We definitely have more stuff to talk about, but I'm going to save it for our next video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in my next one.